Welcome to the Knackers Workshop, I'm Paul. In today's video I'll run through the steps of taking to clean my WW 8mm collets. Hello everyone, I hope you're all fit and fine. As regular viewers will know I've been collecting old WW 8mm watchmaker collets for my IME and Unimat lays. Um, I would suggest that I've got a mixed bag of collets, uh, some useful, some ready for the scrap bin, but I think uh, it'll be useful to run through the cleaning process uh, on, on all of them, more from a practice point of view, and hopefully I'll learn a bit more about the process and, and hopefully you will as well. Uh, now, I could put them all in an ultrasonic cleaner and say the job's done. And to be truthful, uh, after this initial clean, um, I think that will be the approach I'll, I'll take, you know, uh, I'll follow moving forward. But this is more of a sort of maybe classed as a restoration because I don't really know the history of these, uh, these collets. And so, um, so the steps I'm going to follow is to... Um, degrease them just in a standard degreasing so uh, give them a bit of a clean up trying to get the grease off with a um, small toothbrush um, de-rust them so some of them are a bit rusty so I'm going to put them in the, um, in the solution of uh, evapor rust and uh, see how that gets on and then um, then I've also got a, uh, a dye and I'm going to run through um, run, run the dye along the threads just to clean them up because um, some of them are a bit uh, a bit tired um, so um, let's let's get going right so what I've got here is just a container um, I'm just going to put some um, uh, degreasing um, fluid into it so um, obviously you guys are watching from various places in the world, so it it's pretty. Uh, well, that's a lot of sense. Me going on about what uh, brand? Just use something that's local to you. To you, really. Um, and I'm just going to pop all the collets into the into the solution. Now I've poured that in neat, so I'm just going to put a drop of uh, warm water in there as well. So I just poured the kettle. To exciting this, I know. So, um, first thing really is to leave this. Um, what I've been doing is just leaving this for something like 15 minutes no, sorry, 30 minutes and then, um, then we just um, start to uh, get a brush and see what we can do as far as cleaning um, the grime off the. Uh, off the collets, so um, uh, we don't, obviously we don't want to sit here for fifty or thirty minutes. But looking at the um, the bowl, so we're um, I'll return as soon as um, the fifteen minutes, thirty minutes are up. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Hi everyone, we're back now. So I just well, I, as you can see, I've moved the camera, but um, so all I've got is a, a small toothbrush. Um, Collets, as you know, have been soaking now for uh, half an hour. So all I'm doing is just, just really giving them a brush over with the, um, uh, with the toothbrush, just trying to remove any, um, any grime. Uh, when you look at a, uh, see so if you can get out of focus. You got effectively three. I don't know what the technical term for it is. Three slots that. Um, the, on the collet so obviously when they clamp together that um, holds the workpiece uh, in there so what I've been trying to do is go it get the brush let's see if we can get that in focus again and that. oh sorry about that but there's a, a slot on every one so just trying to get it in there um, I've also 
got a, to uh, a toothpick and I've just been putting it down, I don't know what that's called, the bore of the, uh, the collet, just trying to again dislodge anything that may have uh, be floating around in there. So um, that's really the process. So all I'm going to do is just work through all these now. Um, I'm not going to... Oh yeah, the other thing uh, is there's a... Let's see if we can get there. I'm not sure you can see it. Let's get rid of that. There's a, a slot in there. It's a location. It's, uh, it's like a keyway. So when you, when you fit the collet to the... Um, to the lathe that stops it although you've got the draw bar that holds it on here it stops it ro you know re stops the chances of it rotating so I've been sort of cautious to uh, clean out that slot as well um, because um, if that's uh, not working you're not going to get it to, to seat properly in the um, uh, in the collet holder Okay, so I'll work through these and then I'll bring you back for the next, uh, the next section. Okay. Hi everyone, so um, I've gone through each one of these just cleaning them up as, uh, um, as I showed you earlier on. Um, and, um, and I've just uh, rinsed them in cold water to get rid of any of the degreasing agent. It's... Um, and, and actually they dried, dried each of them off uh, just with some kitchen roll, nothing um, nothing special there. Just, just, it was good so I could sort of have a bit of a visual sort of uh, uh, inspection of them and see, you know, there's definitely some that are, are definitely not very good. So, um, so all I'm going to do is um, I've got some, um, let's move the camera around a bit if I can. Just, uh, I cleaned all the container out again, just again, just to remove any of the uh, um, degreasing stuff. Um, since sort of as I'm doing it, it feels like I'm going, I'm getting a bit uh, over the top here. But um, these things are quite, you know, they're really small. These collets, and what 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 I'm trying to do is, it's not like I can. Well, I suppose I could put them on a wire wheel, but I don't think it will. Um, really help for any accuracy or maintaining it so it's really a, a a slow approach and a very manual approach to try and bring these things uh, back to life a bit so um, looking at the outside of most of most of the collets they actually look uh, look quite good and I don't think there's um, too much rust where where are there's a few pretty bad ones I'm mostly concerned about if there's anything up the ball really I'm trying to clean out so I'm just going to put them all, drop, put them all into the evaporust, and um, I think, um, to be honest, I, mean, I wasn't too minds whether to even bother with the evaporust, but I, yeah, I think well, I've, clearly as I'm doing it now, I've decided to go with it. Um, on other things I've done, I've, I've struggled with it really. Um, I know everyone. Maybe I'm uh, sort of roused about it, but uh, I think maybe I'm, or maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know, but so the view was the reason I tried to degrease everything first rather than just straight into the evaporust is uh, just because I can't I can't get too aggressive on trying to trying to clean these things up because they're I suppose they're precision, aren't they? Really, um, and so the services need to have a bit more respect and um, so it's it's really just slowly slowly to on the, on this process so um, let me just put a drop drop more in there um, and then again I'm not 100% um, sure on how long I should leave it bearing in mind these are, are not terribly um, Let's try and get that in focus again. Don't know what's going on there. Anyway, sorry. Come up. That's better. 
pull it down. So, um, yeah, how long to leave them in there? I'm going to go with 24 hours. Just, I've got no real terms of reference. Um, I think that'd be more than enough because they're not actually. There's a few bad ones, but uh, they're not that bad. Um, so, another bring you back session now. So I'm going to leave these for 24 hours, and then I'll return with uh, the next step. Okay. Hi everyone. So we've been 24 hours now. The um, the uh, WW um, eight mil eight millimeter collets uh, have been in the evaporust. Uh, actually, the colour of the evaporust has not uh, changed too much. It's uh, pretty. Um, Pretty clear. There is some some of the darkening to the uh, collets that you normally get with a wrapper rust. Um, so I'm going to just um, just give them another. I, I did clean the brush from the um, uh, degreasing yesterday. So all I'm going to do is just give them a bit of a brush over each one of them again. Yeah, it does look better. And pop them into there, uh, another container there full of uh, clear water or, or f fresh water. And um, and then we just give them a rinse on the other side. Uh, uh, so once we've done, sorry, we put them in the fresh water. Um, I think that neutralizes. Uh, the process that Evaporus uses, which I don't really know what it is, um, but we're, we're then, um, I'll dry them off and then we have a bit of a closer look at them. Okay, so I know it's not ex too exciting, but um, I'll just work me through, work my way through the 20 odd collets that we've got and then I'll in the immortal words of every YouTuber I'll bring you back Hi so once um, I'd finished the um, rinsing of the evaporus from the um, from the collets I then went into a bit of a panic and thought well how am I going to dry these and dry the in you know the uh, the bore um, so I came up with the idea to pop them on the radiator in my home. Um, being in the middle of winter here in the UK, it's, uh, it was definitely on, I can guarantee that. So um, I just left them on there for actually a day really, not because they needed that long, just because I got involved with something else. So um, yeah, yeah, so uh, that that's just the final process before I started to um, Look at the uh, the threads on the on the collets. Hi everyone. Um, so we've gone through the process of um, uh, degreasing the collets, uh, putting them through the evaporust, um, and as you just seen, um, giving them a um, or drying them off on the radiators uh, or radiator. So now the um, the last uh, thing that I want to do is just run across the um, run the dye up and down the threads just to make sure they're okay. So when we uh, connect them to um, or we hold them in place with the uh, draw bar, um, you know we we won't have any issues with the threads. So I've just got a little. Um, uh, die I purchased obviously with the right thread it's interesting actually because um, I'll show you these couple of pictures normally on a die it's um, one side's got a bit of a lead in and then the other sides uh, I don't know what the technical term is but a very sort of abrupt end to allow you to uh, tap right up against the shoulder but if you look at these the, these photos, um, to be truthful, it doesn't look much different either side. So um, if anyone knows why, I, I just was under the impression they were, they were always leading on one side and um, uh, uh, 
no taper on the other but but there, this doesn't seem to be the case so um, what I have so all I've been doing is just uh, let's see if I can get that in the uh, in the view just put it on on a, on the tap and running it up and in most cases like that there is no just no problem at all um, so we know that one's already and tickety boo and job's done so um, I'm not sure I'm not sure whether they they will all be the same um, so this one now this is a lot tighter this one uh, no so that's not so good so there's something clearly uh, it could do with I can't I can't physically hold it while I'm turning um, turning the die I made this I made two pieces got two pieces of wood and I drilled an 8mm um, hole in it, in it so my plan was to be able to put a couple of clamps and just hold it down trying to pro oh, sorry a couple of clamps apply some pressure so then that would allow me to run the die down obviously with because um, I'm at home here in the man cave I'm not um, not in the workshop I don't have access to the clamps and because at the time I'm making this film in um, January 2021 we're in lockdown here in the UK so I can't actually go to the uh, the workshop so um, I'm not going to sit here doing it with all uh, I think that's about 25 of them so um, the so yeah, we've got another one that seems pretty good so that's that's good news so um, what I'll do um, I'll just whiz through these and um, I'm getting good at this I'll bring you back um, I, I did promise myself I'll try and show everyone but everything I do but it does seem a bit crazy just to sit here doing this uh, 21 times so um, not massively entertaining so as I say let me um, let me just whiz through these and then um, we'll just wrap this one up okay okay so I'll, ru I'll run the die um, through along most of those um, the collets probably uh, I think there was about five that that needed um, need me to be able to have access to the workshop so I can hold them in the vice um, so uh, in conclusion really was it a success uh, I think yeah marginally um, I'm not sold on the evapor rust with these I think if they're that rusty they're probably too far gone anyway so you know what what's the point in um, in doing that because the effort of uh, trying to clean off the rust um, you, you it feels like I'm damaging the sur the surface um, of the collet, and and bearing in mind, you know, we're working with with quite sort of precision stuff here. It's um, is it's uh, not well. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I feel it that it really is um, effective, really. But you know, when I get to use these, we'll see. One of the other things I, I did want to mention is, and I, and I want to make a video uh, about it in the future, is what I'm terming um, starting with the end in mind. Now, we can, um, you know, as we saw in the, the beginning of the video, all the collets were just chucked in um, a plastic container and bashing around. So what, what I've done here is, so, or what my theory is, is that we've gone or I've gone through the process of cleaning all these up set you know checking all the uh, the threads are right so they're all ready to use the last thing I want to do is put them back in the container and let them bash around and and dink all the threads in again and, and that stuff so this is the old uh, board here that that came with the uh, um, you know for, for the watchmakers lathe and it's got some holes in to be able to put the put sorry to put the collets in 
So it makes so I had this in mind when I started that I could protect them once I once I I've restored them. So um, I think it's important to to anything that you do and to consider that really. So anyway, that's um, that's about it. So what I will be interested. Um, sorry, just one final thing. What I will be interested to know if there are any watchmaker guys watching is do they although I degrease them it was really the the purpose of doing that was to remove the remove any sort of debris in that and do it that may have built up over years but but do watchmakers I assume they put their these in their ultrasonic cleaners every so often do they apply some sort of oil to them or, or do are they effectively run dry I, I don't know so you know I'm very keen to learn I don't, I don't know anything about watchmaking so um, yeah yeah if anyone does know that it would be good you know um, to to know yeah and hopefully anyone else who will be interested in the answer can um, read the comments and find out Okay, well that's about it. <coughs> about it. Excuse me for today. So um, stay uh, happy, strong, and healthy, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheerio.